The celebrity investors on Shark Tank are a hard group to please. Each member has made a fortune independently, and they generally know a lucrative idea when they see it. With their financial support and the added publicity of the highly popular show, inventors consistently turn their ideas into massive franchises worth millions and sometimes billions of dollars. Today we are exploring the top 10 Shark Tank businesses that exploded. Before Al Bubba Baker appeared on Shark Tank in late 2013, his boneless baby back rib business, Bubba's Q, was doing $154,000 in annual sales. Just a little over five years later, he's bringing in a cool $16 million, and he expects to finish out the year stronger than ever. On the show, Baker made a deal with Shark Tank investor Damon John, the founder of hip-hop clothing brand FUBU. The future couldn't be brighter for Al, John said on Friday's episode of Shark Tank. I still believe that this will potentially be my biggest deal ever. Baker's exponential growth is the result of getting a contract with CKE Restaurants, the parent company of both Carl's Jr. and Hardee's. The burger, which will sell as a single patty for $5.59, a double patty for $6.79, and a one-third pound thick burger for $6.79, will go on sale on April 26th and is expected to be on sale in 3,000 Carl's Jr. and Hardee's stores. Carl's Jr. and Hardee's came up to my booth at a food show because it's a patented boneless rib, Baker said in the update on Shark Tank, the television show that helped launch his company. We're the only people in the United States to do it. From meager beginnings, Bubba believes that he can grow his company to meet projections, which predict he will make more than $200 million in lifetime sales. There has never been a more explosive time in the world of social impact. Social entrepreneurs have emerged from almost every industry, solving problems to improve the lives of others while employing business strategies to do so. A popular strategy is the one-for-one -one business model, a model that's easily tangible for consumers to understand and connect with social impact. I buy one, they give one. Bombas sells re-engineered athletic socks, and for every pair they sell, they donate another pair to charity. Their name comes from the Latin word for bumblebee, and their motto, Be Better, is stitched into every sock as a reminder of their business's philanthropic mission. Bombas co-founders David Heath and Randy Goldberg were working together at a lifestyle website when they saw a post on Facebook about homeless shelters struggling to find socks. According to the New York Times, the idea led to the creation of the company. If other companies can do this for developing world countries, why can't we do this to solve a problem that people don't even know is right here in our backyard, Heath says in the Times. In 2014, they appeared on an episode of Shark Tank, ultimately landing a deal with Damon John. $200,000 in exchange for 17.5% of their company, plus the financing of the inventory. Today, Bombus is one of the biggest Shark Tank successes. Heath told Business Insider's Richard Filoni that the company has been profitable since 2016 and brought in just under $50 million in revenue in 2017. Maine native Sabine Lamont and Jim Selicus started Cousins Maine Lobster as a single food truck in Los Angeles in April of 2012, serving up authentic, sustainable lobster rolls. After an appearance on Shark Tank that netted the duo a $55,000 investment from Barbara Corcoran, Cousins took off. The business has seen exponential growth and now has 20 trucks nationwide and a fast casual restaurant in Los Angeles. It anticipates 20 new trucks on the streets for 2019 and has plans for international expansion. Earlier in 2016, Cousins Maine Lobster reached $20 million in sales. Its two newest cities, Nashville and San Antonio, are seeing record-breaking crowds, and the brand is on track to serve over half a million customers in 2016. Cousins Maine Lobster started with modest ambitions. In 2011, Selicus visited Lomac in Los Angeles. One night during an alcohol-fueled sushi dinner on Sunset Boulevard, they bonded over their shared fondness for the food they grew up with together in Maine. The point that resonated was our loyalty, love, and devotion to our family. And the one thing that was always there for the family times was the lobster, Selicus said. We're like, why don't we bring this lobster out to LA? From these inauspicious, drunken beginnings came a major breakthrough in the world of Shark Tank. The businessmen are now multi-millionaires. Max Gunawan of San Francisco, California is the inventor of Lumio, a modern lamp that looks like a notebook when folded closed. The former architect raised $578,000 on Kickstarter to build the prototype in 2013. He sold a million dollars worth of Lumio lamps before pitching the elegant lighting solution on Shark Tank in 2015. Gunawan asked for a $250,000 investment in exchange for 8% equity. He received offers from all five sharks and ultimately accepted Robert Herjavec's offer of $350,000 for 10% equity. While every shark expressed interest in the product, which sells online and at the Museum of Modern Art in New York and San Francisco, Mark Cuban was the first shark to ask Gunawan about his vision for the company. There has to be something that follows this, Cuban said. What's next? 
Gunwon's next idea, still in the development phase, is a miniature version of the product that folds into a portable lamp the size of a pocketbook. I want this to live in your bag, Gunwon said about the miniature version, adding that the product would also be able to charge mobile devices. Last year, Lumio made $3 million in sales, hitting that mark again this past June, he told Forbes. He explained that his growth is healthy and that he will continue to make distribution deals with stores that appeal to a high-end artistic audience. A simple white plastic footstool that tucks under your toilet has made one Utah family multi-millionaires. Now everyone is like, why didn't I think of that? Says Bobby Edwards, the 41-year-old creator and former CEO of Squatty Potty. I've proven a lot of people wrong and it's felt really good. It all started because Bobby's mother had trouble in the bathroom. I was constipated my whole life, Judy Edwards reluctantly admitted. Age only made the problem worse. A few years ago, a medical professional recommended Judy use a footstool to raise her knees while on the toilet. She tried it, and it worked. It's just a world of difference, she said. Her husband, Bill, was amazed. We both thought, wow, we're in our 60s. Why are we just now hearing about this? The concept is that the Squatty Potty recreates the conditions in which humans are meant to use a toilet. The family began giving footstools to friends, who considered them gag gifts until they started using them. I saw the results, and I saw the effect on people, and I'm like, there really is something here, said Bobby. So he and his parents and one other brother took $35,000 to set up a website and begin manufacturing for real. Finally, on their second try, Squatty Potty qualified for Shark Tank. They sold $1 million in product within the first 24 hours of the TV appearance, and the company also received a $500,000 investment from Lori Griner, which led to high-profile shelf space in Bed Bath & Beyond. First-year sales in 2011 were $17,000. In 2016, sales hit $19 million and continued to rise from there. It's always preferable to travel light when camping or hiking. Thankfully, plenty of products have been made with this preference in mind. One of the most impressive inventions in camping gear comes from Luminate, a company that makes lighting your campsite easier than ever, with lanterns that are inflatable, solar-powered, and waterproof. The lanterns take up much less space and weight than your standard campsite lantern. Founded by Anna Stork and Andrea Shreshta, Luminate was initially designed to assist in post-earthquake relief efforts in Haiti. After a successful Shark Tank pitch that garnered offers from all five sharks and a deal with Mark Cuban for $200,000, the company took off and was able to expand its product line. Now anyone can illuminate their campsite or pool with Luminate products that can recharge through both solar and USB. Luminate may not be a household name in America, but it is making its presence felt in more than 70 countries. A group of humanitarian organizations have been using Luminate products in their operations, including Shelterbox, Doctors Without Borders, and the United Nations Population Fund. This January, business magazine Entrepreneur was reporting that Luminate had completed $5 million in sales through the first nine months of 2018. Groovebook is a mobile app company that lets you print up to 100 of your smartphone photos and create a 4.5 by 6.5 inch photo book that's mailed to you every month. The cost of the service is only $2.99 per month, which includes shipping and handling. To ramp up the business, husband and wife team Julie and Brian Whiteman pitched Groovebook on the ABC TV show Shark Tank. Eleven months after making a deal with shark investors Mark Cuban and Kevin O'Leary on national television, Groovebook announced it was acquired by Shutterfly for $14.5 million. The $14.5 million deal includes an upfront purchase amount and an earnout based on future performance. In Season 5, Kevin O'Leary was the most excited about Groovebook. I always knew something huge was going to happen with this company, said Kevin, as he sat down with the Groovebook's founders, Brian and Julie Whiteman, as they signed their deal with Shutterfly. It's a perfect marriage, Kevin beams of the historic deal. Adds the often intimidating shark, I feel warm and fuzzy inside. When we pitched on Shark Tank, we barely had any sales, say Brian and Julie, noting their business has grown 15 times since appearing on the show. In the early 2000s, Joel Clark was barely making ends meet. He had borrowed $250,000 to keep his pancake mix company alive, started several side hustles for extra cash, spoke with a bankruptcy lawyer about his options, and briefly left his post as CEO. But a new recipe and an appearance on Shark Tank transformed the struggling startup into a booming business. I think the fact that we made it through those years is unbelievable, says Clark, 43, who still runs the Park City, Utah-based company Kodiak Cakes. That's one of the hardest things I've lived through. John launched Kodiak Cakes in 1995, manufacturing the mix with the help of a small co-packer in Utah and storing the inventory in his basement. John and his brother Joel, 21 at the time and a student at the University of Utah, set about selling the mix. Gone was the little wagon, but the brothers still sold the product door-to-door -to, -door to gift shops, hitting ski towns like Park City, Utah, Jackson, Wyoming, and Sun Valley, Idaho. After a rough patch, Clark had been watching a lot of Shark Tank and thought he stood a chance to get a massive investment. But during their pitch, the sharks weren't exactly biting. Joel walked into the tank asking for $500,000 in exchange for a 10% interest in the company. 
arguing that over the next four years, with the Sharks' investment, Kodiak would make over $20 million. During the segment, Sharks' Kevin O'Leary and Barbara Corcoran offered a joint counter, 50% ownership for $500,000, while Robert Herjavec offered $500,000 for a 35% stake in the company. In the end, it was the Sharks' loss. Kodiak cakes are now the top seller for pancake mix at Target and made more than $100 million in revenue in 2018. Amazon recently announced it would purchase Ring, a smart doorbell maker, in a deal reportedly worth $1 billion. The investors on ABC's Shark Tank had a chance to be early backers of this business. Ring CEO Jamie Siminoff appeared in a 2013 episode seeking a $700,000 investment in exchange for 10% of his company, then called Doorbot, but they missed out. None of the Sharks made an offer to invest except for Kevin O'Leary, who Siminoff turned down. The Sharks were extremely nice, Siminoff says. You can't blame an investor for missing out on something they heard for 20 minutes on a TV show. After spending $10,000 constructing a set for the episode and a month perfecting the pitch while trying to run a business, the time had come. Siminoff gave it his all only to receive one unsatisfactory offer, and no guarantee the episode would even air. Disappointed as he was, he returned to his garage and continued to work hard with his team because they knew they were onto something. While the product itself is relatively simple, a video doorbell that lets you see, hear, and speak to whoever's at your door remotely from your smartphone, it taps into something everyone cares about, feeling safe. With a solid product behind him and a mission to reduce crime in neighborhoods, Siminoff had a vision. Apparently, Amazon saw a huge value in this product, because after years of development, they snapped it up for $1 billion. Marco Romley's dive into ABC's hit business reality show Shark Tank was an entrepreneur's worst nightmare. The former NASA engineer spent a year and a half in his entire net worth to develop the BedJet, a smartphone-controlled cooling and heating device for beds. He pitched his product in a February 2015 episode, seeking $250,000 in exchange for 10% of his Newport, Rhode Island company. Sales kicked off two days after his segment aired, but the product was still in the prototype phase when he taped the segment. Unfortunately, all five celebrity investors shot it down. They thought he was rude and arrogant. They even insulted his mother during the taping, but it was edited out. They told him the bed jet was doomed to failure, even though it had received $75,000 in pre-orders on Kickstarter, a crowdfunding site. They hated me, and they hated the product, Romley said. They told me no one would ever want the bed jet. Refusing to be discouraged by the rejection, a Romley promptly emptied his life savings, mortgaged his house, and loaded up his credit cards to get his product into production, and his bet paid off. Within the year, BedJet was one of the highest-rated products in the mattress category on Amazon. By the end of 2016, sales soared to 300% from the year prior and are on track to double again in 2017. Had the Sharks invested, they would have nearly quintupled their money in less than three years. The company is currently valued at more than $5 million.